Namaste and welcome to today's episode of Interview. Guest for today's evening is an amazing personality who is from the field of wildlife conservation. He is a range officer by profession. So without any further delay, let's get started. Hello and welcome Mr. Ranjan Singh Pariha to this session of Interview. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you. Well, uh, moving on to the first question, as our audience is unaware about you, so tell us about yourself a little bit. By graduation, I'm an engineer. Then uh, I am leaning towards the forest department. So I started preparing for the exam and got uh, selected. Then I got uh, one and a half year training in Hyderabad. And after training, I got posted last year in Bandagwa Tiger Reserve. And uh, luckily, I got the core area of the forest. Okay. Uh, that's really nice. And you, uh, it's really appreciative of you about your work that you are currently being doing. So our next question is, how easy to pose with Ravina Tendon? Uh, uh, it was quite easy. She was a uh, guest to us, and while she was uh, uh, doing her safari, uh, she needed uh, some favors. And uh, because uh, when such celebrities do come uh, in our parks, there is a huge crowd uh, that assembles near them. So uh, while we were uh, making her safe, we got a pose. Okay. Uh, that's really interesting. And this speak caught my attention from your highlights. Okay, so uh, uh, tell us something about your journey. Means how did you choose this profession of being a range officer? So how was all the, your journey till that? Uh, it was quite good. It was, uh, uh, you may say that what people think of adventure doing uh, in outside area we will do uh, daily actually we do daily and we do uh, patrolling foot patrolling and a uh, lot of animals we see um, many times we see uh, tiger bear uh, we see leopards and other carnivores that people use to uh, do by paying <laughs> And actually, we are getting paid for doing such things. So that's wonderful. And uh, being in nature is quite awesome. Yeah, it is. Means, uh, tell us something about the preparation. Means, uh, did you do any coaching regarding this range officer or anything? Means, how was, uh, you, what about your study hours during uh, that period? Uh, I haven't done uh, post means. Uh, I have done self preparation. Uh, I was during that time, so I started preparation for for services. Uh, so uh, pre was quite easy for me. Then for means I chose uh, environmental science, and then uh, means was also good. Uh, Got some this mass so only range officer was an option to me. And post quarterly academy and faculty were good. And it was good, good that uh, some of the uh, faculty were just selected for the civil services. So uh, that was good. And about the study hours, uh, it was fluctuating. Sometimes I did this study. Uh, for four hours, three hours, and some days uh, I studied for 16 hours. Was it your first attempt when you got selected as range officer? Yeah, for forest services. Yeah, uh, it was my first attempt. Okay, that's really nice. And uh, uh, what would you uh, tell to the young aspirants who are really willing to uh, follow your footsteps? Uh, firstly, uh, they need to uh, uh, self-assess why they are uh, choosing to come. If they find uh, a strong reason to come uh, to join the service, to the, join the forest service, 
so that will be their self motivation you they didn't need any motivation from someone else and because when you have a will to become something so that motivates you that keeps you awake and yeah and that that thing makes a fire in yourself that you have to achieve something and you have to work hard and you are uh, lagging somewhere self assessment is good okay so what responsibilities do you have currently uh i am posted in the uh, headquarter range of bandwagon tiger reserve uh, known as tala core and uh, the bandwagon started in 1968 with so uh yeah. people person connection is low because uh, all the villages that were inside the tala core were rehabilitated to the uh, places and it's good and the main uh, responsibility that is the habitat management and to check the biotic pressure that is around the uh, periphery of the uh, range and to uh, the actually main thing is the patrolling the how much we patrol the area we get uh, information where the people are entering where they are uh, there are chances that they can do poaching so responsibility for uh, animal safety so how was your visit to pobitra wildlife sanctuary assam uh it was nice uh, actually first time uh, we was visited so pobitra and first time we saw the rhino yeah. uh, so it was a good okay Uh, you once captured the video clip of Indian pita, the colorful bird. Could you share the storytelling behind that video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, last year I was uh, uh, doing a monsoon patrolling. I think the period was the same. Uh, June or July was there, and just uh, drizzling was has started here. So. when the sun start the pitta comes out and they makes a wonderful sound so that sound uh, caught my attention and i started uh, searching what bird is making such sound then i saw a colorful bird sitting and it was making sound uh, just like whistling so uh, i just uh, take out my camera and started this video shooting uh that video was really incredible so how long have you been in this profession as a range officer as a range officer uh as a range officer uh, my service is of two and a half year okay and before that i was in uh, training in hyderabad so including that i have uh, been range officer as a four year but in in field uh, two and a half years So, what is your strength as a forest range officer? Means, what type of skills have you developed so far over the years? Uh, the only skill I can say that to identify the birds, because uh, birding was first uh, to me in academy. Uh, now I can recognize a lot of birds, about seventy or eighty species. I can recognize and. another thing is by their call i can say that this bird is uh, making call and the other thing is what people uh, say uh, about calls there are three type of four types of uh, what animals are calling so with call i can say that uh, whether the uh, carnivore is moving is it sitting why are they uh, making such calls and why a uh, tiger is making such call is it calling or uh, babies or warning someone so okay. these are the skill that range well, lot more yeah so could yeah. you recall some stories uh, during your viva session as a range officer uh yeah uh, viva was good i have uh, i've been uh, sitting in seema ma'am's board and the main focus was there that why i Uh, chose forest ranger be, uh, as i came with a good background from college uh, i was uh, doing biomedical engineering 
and then I got selected for that. They were main focus was why as a biomedical engineer I can have a good uh, career, and my college was also good. Uh, it was Samrata Stoke College, government college from Odisha. So their main focus why why I am changing my uh, field. Then uh, most of questions were on my hobby, as I have uh, mentioned that I love to read novels. So that time I was reading uh, Shiva trilogy. So your question was on with some environmental points were there in book. This fifteen uh, to twenty minute work session was nice there. Okay. Uh, what strategies or mindset is required for a range officer in the working hours? Uh, when uh, you are in field, you must be cool and always attentive. Uh, if you are an absent-minded and you are moving in the field, so there are a lot of chances that a panivore is sitting uh, yeah. for a prey, and you might accidentally come to uh, in front of him, and there are always risk there. So present-minded. Is required. And the other thing is when you are interacting with people, you should always be clear-minded what your uh, points are, uh, where you have to put pressure on people, and where you have to accept the people. So, what kind of aspects do you care for while preparing for this exam? Uh, when I started for the exam. Uh, for the pre, I was I was mainly focusing on uh, aptitude paper because if I have, I th thought that I I will score good marks in uh, pre in second paper, then my first uh, paper one will be uh, adjusted. So and then in mains, uh, I mainly fo focus on my subjects uh, environmental science. I, I did good in that. An interview, obviously, uh, my brother was also selected then that time for the civil service. So I have asked you what their mindset is. Uh, so he told that you should be real about yourself and you should know yourself well. Then you can drag all the interview in the direction in which you want, and that worked for me. Okay. Uh, describe your daily routine as a forest range officer. Uh, actually, uh, when you are in uh, wildlife area, the routine can be fixed. Uh, but mainly, what I used to follow that uh, at six a.m. I used to go inside the jungle for patrolling, and I do patrolling for uh, my boundary area, and then try for patrolling of five to six kilometers, sometimes seven or eight. Uh, it varies. Then I prefer to come by uh, 10 if. Then after doing a one or one or a half hour rest, I do sit in the office. And if there is a, some agency in the field, then I do visit. Or otherwise, I uh, sit in office up to 5 p.m. and then do one or one half hour field visit again. But uh, that's not fixed because in uh, when you are working in wildlife area, you're all Routine will be changed. You are doing something today, yesterday, uh, but tomorrow there will be some new, new thing, and you are doing some new job. So, what types of arms and ammunition do you carry with you? Uh, actually, in the core area, uh, as there is no village, so there is no risk to us. So, I don't uh, carry any arms and ammunition. But for my protection, I do carry a uh, air system then provided uh, to us from the, to prevent ourselves from the animals attack. So I do carry a sun then. Um, do you think that uh, technology has influenced the work of forest range officer? Yes, uh, with the help of technology, we are doing a lot of things. Uh, as we are uh, doing for habitat management, and we are uh, require we do require 
to do some water management thing. So we do proper GIS mappings, and when we are doing uh, the uh, projects of the grassland management, we do uh, see how the, our forest is changing and how the grassland is changing, whether it is expanding or it is constricting. So technology is doing pretty good, and now uh, we are seeing that uh, elephants uh, are res became resident to the Pandogar. Uh, there is no history of elephant movement in 300 and 400 years to this area, uh, even to this landscape. But uh, in 2018, some herd of uh, about 38 to 40 came here. Now they settled here and now they are breeding and the population increases to 50 to 55. So before becoming a havoc to us, we have started as a technology like uh, we are doing drone surveillance to them. So have you come across a wounded animal in the forest ever? Yeah, uh, there are a lot of incidents that had occurred. Like uh, there happened once uh, that a tigress was wounded when she was uh, uh, praying. Uh, there was a wild boar that uh, his tusk uh, made a uh, wound to the tigers. So you were not the forest range officer. What other career options have you kept for yourself? I I had made my mind that I would be a non government officer. So if I wouldn't have been a uh, range officer, then I would have definitely in some civil services. Or I was also selected for the uh, sub inspector post of uh, MP police. So there was uh, uh, other chance. Okay. Uh, what future plans have you uh, had in your mind regarding your job? Uh, regarding job, no future minds. Uh, I'm doing, I think I am doing a good job here. And, then I will actually I am in love with wildlife. So if yeah. I get a chance, then I will definitely do something in translocations of animals. I will do some favor. You once visited Andamans. So how was your experience? Could uh, you share something from that tour? Uh, uh, that time we were in uh, South India too. Uh, the plan was uh, for seven days to stay in Andaman and Nicobar. That was a great time with us, with the whole batch and all of our friends. So we enjoyed a lot uh, Radhanagri Beach, uh, Mud Island, and it was good. It was quite enjoying, and we were free to do whatever you want to do. Just enjoy. It. And in the morning session, we were in some forest area. And in the evening, all our time is ours. So we do visit the uh, uh, good places there. So uh, share some storytelling from Bandavgar National Park. OK. So the main story about Bandavgar is that the word Pandav means brother and Gad means fort. So this fort uh, is gifted uh, by Lord Ram to his brother, Lord Lakshman. Actually, when they were moving from north to south, uh, while they're in Banwas, they moved from this area. And Lakshman was in love with this area. He, he was very fond of uh, the greenery, the uh, flora and the fauna. So he... Uh, Say to Rama that he wants to stay here. So when the whole thing came to end, and then uh, Rama has gifted the fort, the main fort, to his brother Lakshman. So that's why this area is known as Bandargarh. Uh, so you once have captured the flock of vultures in Bandargarh National Park. How did you get that shot? Uh, Actually, vultures uh, in the uh, evening, 
they do come to the uh, a place uh, there is a grassland uh, uh, known as rajbehra and there is a stop dam there and water filled in that area so they came there for cooling and they uh, expand their wings so i was in uh, regular checking of the area and I, i suddenly saw that there is a lot of birds were sitting uh, sitting there so i moved to that close uh, moved close to that area and had a great shot and there were three uh, species of vultures there uh, egyptian vultures were there and woolly necked was there and king vultures were there well how was a visit to gir national park gujarat uh, it was great and when we see the uh, land uh, that uh, yeah. that and the energy that came to us is great and though our heart filled with joy that first time we have ever seen uh, such a great animal moving just next to us and he was just like ignoring to us and moving just next to us and there was a uh, fear that it might jump and it might attack to us we were so close but he didn't uh, that it was so it was like a dude uh, like in in word to move koi bhi and he uh, they kept moving uh, if you had to suggest a strategy uh, to curtail the cutting down of trees in the forest to the people what would be your strategy then actually uh, what i feel that the people are cutting the animals to oh, sorry uh, to the trees for their daily use purposes like uh, they use the uh, wood for fuels and for uh, their uh, like beds of furniture and in home uh, structures so if alternate is provided to them they will no long use uh, the woods so that actually we are trying to do in the fringe area of villages and we are quite uh, the result is quite satisfying and now people are less uh, moving into the power area and the tree cutting is very less so you once captured the picture of a wild tail swallow in tala madhya pradesh could you please share the story behind that capture uh, uh, actually the place where uh, we uh, clicked that photo was uh, Uh, called as Amahakol Stop Dam, and it is filled with uh, water. And uh, there are and they do nesting, and that was the mating time for the birds. So they kept moving and moving and moving, and suddenly there was a hole like a tree, and they sit there, and the color was so bright and so wonderful that amazed me. So I just clicked the Okay, that was also really nice one. What type of physical fitness do you prefer for yourself? Uh, just being healthy is good. Uh, I have I haven't set any goals for me for physical fitness to me, uh, but uh, regular foot patrolling to five to six areas in this uh, hilly terrain. Keeps us fit. Okay. So, have you ever failed in your work as a as a role playing in a forest range officer? So, if you have failed, so what type of lessons you have learned so far? I didn't think that I haven't I did failed in any work in here. It was uh, the career is very small to me. Uh, right now two and a half years uh, i haven't done so much work so the failure is fearless uh, i say i till now i haven't faced any failure okay do you have any greatest achievements so far I means according to you do you have any satisfied work uh, in yeah. your field recently uh, uh, 
there was an elephant uh, wild elephant that was uh, quite problematic to us and to the villagers it, uh, it, it was subdued it would continue moving in the villages and destroying their homes and destroying our camps and uh, was damaging their crops so we got permission from the uh, chief wildlife warden that uh, now uh, just uh, came there then so the whole my team with uh, some uh, doctors uh, dd was there and sdos were there we moved to the area where it was uh, staying that time and we uh, we were successful in taming that wild animal wow uh, that's really great and uh, mr ranjan we are to the end of this session uh, the last words is yours what you would like to share at this moment to our viewers well i would only say that when you are in the nature just feel what you get from the wonderful earth what it is providing the whole life is dependent on the things that is nature is providing to us so just keep in mind just give back whatever good you can give to the nature this hmm. world okay uh, so mr ranjan thank you so much for your valuable time i must say that you are truly an amazing and inspiring personality it was great interacting with you all the best for your future endeavors thank you kali it was good interacting with you welcome uh, so audience this was ranjan singh parihar from the field of wildlife conservation hope you like today's interview i will be back soon with another eminent personality very soon till then thank you so much for watching